Hello, thank you for listening to my presentation. Uh, I'll be discussing plastic mulching substitutes uh, in the case of Kenya. Uh, my name is Ana Maria Cáceres and I belong to Cortin University. Agricultural plastic mulch is a single use plastic that is normally used for a single growing season which is usually less than one year. It is widely used because of its many benefits, which include moisture retention, soil warming, weed and pest control. It helps to increase crop yield as well as crop growth. And in many cases, production costs are reduced. However, um, this plastic mulch also comes with some drawbacks including that it's a major source of macro micro and nanoplastics uh, this is going to impair the soil health and functionality and uh, thus um, hindering the carbon sequestering capacity um, and in time the plant growth yield is affected especially after 10 years um, this is this can affect livelihoods and uh, the retrieval of plastic mulch is very challenging um, and it's often left in croplands because of the time consuming and labor intensive nature of the removal plastic uh, mulch films are ranked as the second highest environmental risk among all agricultural plastics, according to the FAO. This project will be looking into recommendations for the Kenyan context on material substitutes based on the HS code, harmonized system codes, to first reduce the adverse effects while keeping its benefits, and secondly, to foster economic growth, either to, through promoting trade or by um, promoting local manufacturing. Interventions and alternatives to agricultural plastic mulch can be assessed under the 6R hierarchy, which is based on zero waste and circular economy principles, and the 3D concept, which applies to mismanaged and leaked plastics. So we can see that at the top of the hierarchy, we, there are the organic mulching practices which if some of the materials used in, used, in, used in these practices are damaged or discarded, this will actually prevent harm in soil. If they are degraded, it will reduce harm in soil. The second best intervention, according, this is according to the FAO, is biodegradable mulch films, which if they were to be damaged, degraded or discarded, this will reduce harm in soil. All this is compared to the plastic mulch. Organic mulching practices use non-plastics or plastic substitutes, and biodegradable mulch films can use plastic alternatives or are also known as better plastics. These definitions are based on the UN concepts. Now, to dive a bit deeper into the top two substitutes and alternatives to agricultural plastic mulch, we see that organic mulching practices, which is at the top of the hierarchy, um, these practices uh, make use of biomass, which can include crop residues or cover crops. Um, they avoid the uh, generation of the release of greenhouse gases they prevent erosion, they can suppress weed growth and provide habitat for pollinators, promote soil moisture, and this increases soil health and microbial activity. Thus, the soil carbon capture is enhanced. Uh, in terms of the biodegradable plastic alternatives, this can be based on plants, algae, fungi, or bacteria. They can be fully or partially made from biological inputs. Um, we have two main distinctions um, uh, within the biodegradable materials. One is non-petroleum based 
the other ones are petroleum based. And the FAO recommendation is that biodegradable and compostable options um, should be used for agricultural systems only if plastics cannot be avoided, replaced, or easily retrieved. Um, this biodegradation, the biodegradation of mulch films, um, very significantly, significantly depending on the weather conditions, climate conditions. The FAO also warns that the long-term impact on soils of the use of these biodegradable mulch films has to be assessed first. The agricultural sector in Kenya is one of the most important. Agriculture accounts for 70% of rural jobs and 40% of the nation's workforce. The sector makes up for 30% of GDP directly. 60% of the export earnings come from agricultural products. Crop diseases, pests, and weeds greatly reduce the potential of these crops, both in quality and quantity, so they can have losses of over 30%. In Kenya, small-scale farming is largely rain-fed and thus highly vulnerable to climate change impacts, such as unreliable rainfall and frequent episodes of drought. This results in lower and highly unpredictable income streams for the typical small-scale farmer in rural Kenya. The food crops subsector does not currently meet the country's demand for food communities. As a result, Kenya has to import large quantities of food products to meet the local consumption demand. The top three export crops are tea, horticultural products, and coffee. Farmers highly value plastic mulch, primarily utilized in horticultural products. The edges that have been identified as suitable for horticultural crops are mainly of two types. Uh, they can be cover crops, which are rye grass and hay, white clover, the top two ones, and the bottom two ones, which are mostly crop residues. These, these materials were assessed in terms of local availability, recycling and recovery rates, and the RCA, which can be a useful proxy of existing productive capacities of a country to supply alternative materials. So we can see that, that unlike covered crops, there is availability of co crop residues in Kenya and that, has, and that these materials have a very high RCA, which is 490. It should be this this indicator is better if it's higher than one. To put this into perspective, the the TRCA and Kenya is one of the top tea exporters in the world is 431. So this means that there's a lot of these materials in Kenya. Um, the recycling and recovery rate of these of these materials of crop residues are, is only 20%. It is used as animal feed and cooking, cooking fuel use, and the majority is burned. Some of the advantages of including, of using these kind of substitutes include the same as plastic mulch, and include that there's no need for purchasing or removing fuels. These materials will decompose and improve the soil health and functionality are locally available and they also save in inputs. Uh, they also enhance crop yield. Um, but some of the limitations that have to be considered as well is that this will represent a change in current agricultural practices. These may be hard to mechanize. Uh, it may be a, a costly initial investment and there may be some crop competition, especially if we were to use covered crops. To characterize the crop residue burning in Kenya, we 
used the NASA's VIRS active fire data from January 2020 to October 2023. We can see that the red dots, dots over here represent um, fires identified. And then we did this, uh, we, with these ones in mind, we did an overlay with the, with the country's farmlands. And we can see that the majority of fires are happening in croplands. The FAO data also indicates that over 2 million of tons of crop residues were burned in Kenya in 2017, and this is the latest year of data. However, we have to see the other uses of, um, consider the other uses of crop residues in Kenya. The Fresh Pack Impact Hub is assessing the performance of various plastic alternative, alternative mulching materials, including the biodegradable mulch, BDM, from the AgroMulch Film Project. This project is driven by two main factors. First, the African mulch field market is growing and the agricultural sector is shifting towards sustainability. They are aiming to develop fully the biodegradable mulch film with customable biodegradable rates to African climate conditions. There's also the agrimats or mulch mats or biomass boards, which are innovative in bio business models centered in crop residues. They are cost effective and they are made from readily available organic waste materials. The key takeaways are the following. We can see that Kenya has an overabundance of crop residues, and this can represent a great advantage for them. The, in terms of the biodegradable mulch films, we have to consider all the implications before they are um, seen as a sustainable solution. Um, um, the results from the fresh pack trials are yet to be seen. They are going to be ready next year. Uh, and based on that, future solutions can be built on. The agri-mats, uh, which is the use of crop residues to make mulching mats, it's a promising alternative that uh, Kenya could certainly look into.